Hey guys, welcome back to Cooking at Pam's Place. I'm Pam and on this episode we're getting ready to make pork tenderloin. Stuffed pork tenderloin. It's going to be absolutely amazingly delicious. Oh my goodness. And if you want to learn how to make all kind of food, homemade, easy, simple, made from scratch, take a second and subscribe to the channel. Turn on that notification bell so you won't miss anything. And then just keep hanging around because I have a whole channel full of recipes that'll get you there. Let's get busy. Okay, we are back and I was just cutting up some green onions. You're gonna need some of those. The star of the dish, our pork tenderloin. Going to need some panko breadcrumbs, cooked and crumbled bacon. We've got um, cream cheese, regular cheddar cheese, some seasonings, olive oil. And typically, I would put spinach in this filling, but I didn't have any when I went to the refrigerator. So I'm going to substitute broccoli. And what a better time to do so, because with all the food shortages and things like that, you've got to learn how to substitute for things that you have already in your pantry. So we're going to go ahead and get our pork tenderloin cut, trimmed, and ready to go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make our filling for our pork tenderloin. That means we're gonna mix pretty much everything together, starting off with our softened cream cheese, cheddar cheese. Don't forget to check the description for all the ingredients. Putting in our scallions, green onions, our cooked and crumbled bacon, little dried parsley, and this is probably a little bit more filling than I will need. I'm putting in my broccoli because I have a very small pork tenderloin. So you have to adjust your filling accordingly. So you can double it if you have a little bit more. So I'm just putting in, I don't need that yet. Just putting in a little Himalayan salt, garlic powder, and black pepper. Salt and black pepper as always to your taste. I want to go ahead and mix this together and make sure everything is well combined. Okay, as always, this is what your filling should look like right before um, you get ready to set it aside once it's well combined. But as always, I was getting ready to say, as always, go in and taste your filling or whatever you're making as you go along because once the stuffed is stuffed and you can't change anything, you can't add anything to it and you surely can't take it away. Mmm, that is delicious. Perfect. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious. So we're going to set that aside and we're going to get ready to fillet our pork tenderloin. Now, there's some fat on this side and I'm only going to trim off a little bit of it. You want to leave some of that fat on there because fat is your flavor. But you don't need any extra that may be hanging off. So go ahead and trim that up. This is a nice smooth even layer here so I'm going to pretty much leave it as it is. Get this piece off right here and that should do it. Now this is a very small pork tenderloin but the principle applies no matter what the size is. I am not going to cut this in half and open it up and stuff it that way. I'm going to cut just the very top half maybe one third of it so that we can open it up just a little bit further. So you just want to take your knife, and I'll turn this way so you guys can see, and I'm going to cut on the upper half of it, not directly in between in the middle. And you just want to go gently through it. Don't go so fast that you cut all the way through it. Watch your hand. It also helps if you have a really good sharp knife, but in having that really good sharp knife, you want to make sure you watch your hand, you don't cut your hand. And don't fillet it all the way through. You're opening it up. So we have this side open up, as you can see. Now I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to cut from the inside going towards the outside and open it up that way, just like a book. So now you still want to go in about another third of the way down. Again, watching your hand and fillet it so that you're opening it up and it becomes a wider piece. Yes. 
and this is what you have when you're done. You can see that? It's nice and wide. Now I'm going to get my mallet so I can pound it out a little bit as well as some wax paper. I'll be right back. Okay, and I said wax paper before, but I meant the clear wrap, not wax paper. Although if that's all you have, you probably can go ahead and get away with using it. I have a layer on the bottom and the top. You just want to put that wax paper over there. And then using the smooth side, because we're not trying to tenderize, we're trying to flatten. So using the smooth side, you just want to pound it out away from you. You're trying to get it just a little bit more even as far as the thickness is concerned. Okay, now that we have it pounded out, before we get ready to stuff it, go ahead and get your breading ready, which is your panko bread crumbs. You want to pour those in a pretty long dish that will pretty much fit. You need about a cup. Go ahead and season that up with a little thyme leaves. Salt and black pepper again to taste. Okay, make sure you mix that up so it'll be well combined when you get ready to roll your pork loin in it. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take our top layer of the clear plastic <clears throat> off of it. You can leave the bottom layer on. That's just going to make for easy cleanup. So just let it still rest on that. And you want to put your filling on the half that's closest to you. Spread it in an even layer as much as possible. And you want to make sure it's just on one half of it, not the whole thing. You're going to roll it up just like a jelly roll. Now you want to roll it pretty tight, as tight as you can, starting from the end nearest you and rolling out that way. Release the plastic wrap as you roll. And don't worry about your fingers, you'll have to wash your hands. You will get a little messy, but that's okay. Just roll it tight as you can. Okay. If you feel you need to tie it, you can go ahead and tie it. I will be putting mine in the oven seam side down, so I won't need that. Again, leaving the plastic wrap here, we're going to pour a little olive oil on it and rub that all over. So this plastic wrap is going to help with the cleanup when that time comes. Make sure you rub the bottom half of it with olive oil as well as the top half. And then go ahead from there, put it in your breadcrumbs and make sure the whole piece is quoted, quoted, coated. But before I do that, I want to prepare my actual baking tray. So one second. Okay, now I just have a small baking tray here and I'm just spraying it lightly with a little olive oil. That's all the preparation you need. Foil on it. Again, easy cleanup. But I'm not sure if I said this earlier. You want to make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. So if it is not, go ahead and heat that oven up. And then you're just going to take this and make sure it's well quote, quoted. I keep saying quoted, oh my goodness. Well coated with the breadcrumbs all over on all sides. Then we're going to put this in a 350 degree oven. I have about a one to a one and a quarter pound uh, pork loin. So probably about 30 minutes, but at least you want the internal temperature to reach 145 degrees with an instant read thermometer. So that's your overall guide right there. Sitting it on the tray, seam side down. Okay, so this is what we look like going into the oven and I will see you all back in the kitchen when it's done. 
Okay guys, we are back and all done out of the oven. At this point, I lost my entire audio. I have no clue of what happened, but it is now done and I'm going to give it a slice so you guys can see the inside. I've just taken it and sat it on my cutting board and we're just going to go ahead and get a nice slice off of here and then I am going to do a taste test. Oh my goodness. Make sure you have a very sharp knife to go ahead and cut this with. Oh my goodness, if you all could smell this, it is absolutely amazing. Oh my goodness, amazingly delicious. Mm -mm. Yes, look at that guys. Look at it, look at it, look at the filling on the inside perfectly in there. It's still nice and juicy and oh, it smells so delicious. So let's do a taste test. Look at it again, guys. Again, I apologize. I lost my audio. So I am doing a voiceover at this point in time, but I'm just going to go ahead and give it a taste. And I'm pretty sure that you can tell by my face and my expression how good it was. It was amazingly delicious. And I thank each and every one of you all for coming and hanging out with me today. Don't forget to go over to cookingatpamsplace.com and sign up for monthly exclusive recipes as well as email notification every time I upload a video. I appreciate each and every one of you all. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back and hanging out with me. If you are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Give me a thumbs up and share the video out. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. If you make this dish, please let me know how you liked it. Mm -mm. It is absolutely delicious. Tell everyone you know that Pam over at Cooking at Pam's Place is making amazing dishes. And I will see you next time. The good Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Mm -mm.